Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Impiction stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Impiction is an indoor software company that helps improve operations and creates a safer work environment. The company is headquartered in Palo Alto, California and was founded in 2014. It went public in 2014 in trades on the NASDAQ and Deutsche Börse. The software uses sensors to locate people, inventory, and assets to track indoor activities. For example, a supermarket manager can track customers throughout the day so they can efficiently schedule the appropriate number of employees per shift. Another example is a warehouse can track inventory better so it does not run out of product and it can also help reduce theft by employees. If something was stolen, then Impiction software allows the customer to figure out the exact moment and location the item was stolen. Let's get started with the model. This is a micro cap company, 114 million market cap. They're trading at $1 a share and they have 112 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So they did have positive free cash flow in 2017, negative after that. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. That's negative every year. Revenue is a sales for the company and they had the highest sales in 2017 at 45 million. Then it dropped a lot in 2018 at 4 million. It's been increasing a little bit. It's at 9 million currently. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. And revenue minus cost of revenue gives you your gross profit. That peaked in 2017 at 10.8 million. In 2020, it was 6.7 million. Below that is operating expenses and their operating expenses are higher than their gross profit, so that gives them negative operating income each year. Research and development is an operating expense and they probably spend a lot of money in that category. Below that is the interest they pay in their debt. They paid 3.8 million in 2017, that was the most. It's down to 2.4 million in 2020. Below that is other income and expenses. Their other expenses are mainly asset impairments. And the bottom line of the income statement is their net income, which is negative every year since they have such low revenue. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses or generates from its operational business. They did have positive operating cash flow in 2017, negative after that. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. They had their highest CapEx year in 2020 at 13 million. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. That was positive 1 million in 2017, negative after that. Since they're losing money most years, they need cash from somewhere to run their business. They're mainly doing it from capital stock. They issued 6.6 .6 million in 2017, then 29 million, 21 million, and 55 million. Every time a company issues capital stock, it increases the shares outstanding, making your shares less valuable. In the past four years, they issued $14 million of debt and paid down $17 million of debt. So they're decreasing their debt load. Let's look at the capital structure. 45 million of equity, 8 million of debt. They're 86% equity, 14% debt. Their net debt is 18 million. So they can pay off all the debt with the cash on their balance sheet and still have $18 million left over. Their WAC is 12.7% and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. Since I was unable to figure out a point where they'd have positive free cash flows, I used the book value on their balance sheet as the value of the company. Book value is assets minus liabilities, and they have $45 million of book value according to their balance sheet. I divided that number by 112 million shares, 
and I get a stock price of 40 cents. They're trading at $1, so they're trading at a 155% premium. It's a sell according to the model. This is a stock price the last five years, so it looks like the stock was trading at half a million dollars, but of course it was never this high. They did a lot of reverse stock splits. When a company's stock price falls below $1, they usually do a reverse stock split so they don't get delisted and put onto the OTC. A reverse stock split is a sign of distress. This is the stock price the last year. So it looks like it peaked at about $2.30, but it's come all the way back down. People appear bearish on this stock. It keeps getting driven down the price. The stock has gone down 13% in the past 52 weeks while the S&P 500 went up 41%. The 52 week low was 92 cents, the high was 289, and the stock is trading below its 50 day and 200 day moving average. This is a pretty liquid stock, 3 to 8 million shares are traded each day. Of the 112 million shares outstanding, 98 million are on float, 6% are held by institutions, and 6% of the shares are shorted. In the past year, this stock has gone down 13%, while its industry went up 40%, and the market went up 53%. But in the past three years and five years, this stock has gone down almost 100%, which of course is much worse than its industry and the market. In the past five years, their annual earnings decreased 14%, its industry increased 13%, and the market increased 12%. In the past year, their earnings decreased 2%, its industry increased 19%, and the market also increased 19%. If you invested $10,000 into this company when it IPO'd in 2012, you'd be down to three cents today. All those reverse stock splits have diluted the shares so much, it's pretty much worthless. The biggest shareholder is Vanguard at 3.18%, then Nadir Ali, the founder, BlackRock, and a couple other executives at the company. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 33, the median is 22. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so we can't look at the PE. Their price of sales is 12.3, so investors are paying $12.30 for $1 revenue. They have a good price to book at 2.6. And price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, it's equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities in the balance sheet and they have 45 million of equity, 22 million of tangible equity, since they have 23 million of intangible assets on their balance sheet. They have negative return on invested capital, negative interest coverage ratio, and negative ROE. They do have a good current ratio. Their current ratio is 2.5, so they can cover their current liabilities two and a half times. And their current assets are mainly cash of 26 million. They seem to be undercapitalized. They had negative $34 million of free cash flow and $18 million of working capital. So they're short $16 million. So they're gonna have to do another capital raise to fund their business over the next 12 months. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of 28 companies in the same industry as Impiction. And if Impiction has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. So we can't look at their PE. They are doing better than average in price to sales and price to book. They're a little worse than average in current ratio. They have a bad ROE. They only have 14% debt, average is 29%. And they're a really small company, only 114 million market cap, much smaller than the average of 34 billion. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 155% premium. It's really hard to tell how well this company will do in the future. They may do really well. They seem to be acquiring other businesses and trying to grow their brand, but they haven't gotten much sales. So it's really hard to see. Anything can happen. I rank their free cash flows one out of 10, their revenue is one out of 10, and their ratio is five out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below.